Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a kit I've been dying to get my hands on for quite some time. It's the Sun Founder Galaxy Rover. It's a Mars Rover kit. You can get it either from Sun Founder or Amazon or um, Inventor.io. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I think adults and kids alike are going to enjoy putting this together. And you build it from scratch, you're going to learn a lot about electronics and, of course, robotics. And then at the end, you can program it or use it as a little remote control car and send it out onto all sorts of incredible landscapes. We'll look at that later. Okay, let's see what's inside. Inside the box, there's an instruction parts guide. We'll look at that in a moment. There's six wheels. And then the whole thing comes in three boxes. Labeled one, two, and three. And these have a lot of parts inside. I already had a look. This is a pretty complicated thing to build, but we'll go through it one step at a time. So the instructions, so you don't get a manual with it, you do get this instruction sheet. It lists every single part in there, and you can see there are a lot of parts. A lot of rivets, screws, standoffs, there's like five circuit boards, a lot of wires, and in fact it comes with some tools to help you, which is very nice. And there's a solar panel, which will power the thing on top of the batteries. And inside, you have this huge diagram walking you through all the steps. As I said, it, it's pretty complicated. They do have these uh, QR codes on the front here. One is documentation. There's another that I think just takes you straight into how you can play with the thing. And this is probably a really good video to watch. This is an assembly video. I recommend you watch this before you start building this kit. screws and so on in here. Servo motors with the main case. It's a battery I think. It looks like the numbered boxes are not representative of where you start. I would have thought you would have started building everything out of box one and then move to two. What do we have in here? And here we have electronics. What I'm looking for at this point are the screwdrivers. Aha. So you do in fact have to open all three boxes. Screwdriver. Another screwdriver. Some panel. Okay. These are the four tools we're going to need. Five tools we're going to need. In the middle. 
French. Hex nut. Tiny screwdriver. Two different Phillips size screwdrivers. This is the basic chassis of the robot. You can see it has articulated sections on each side. This is where the three wheels on each side are going to go and it's flexible so that it can run over rough terrain. So I just spent about 30 minutes putting on the servo motors, six motors for the six wheels. And boy, that was a lot of little nuts and screws and washers. And in fact, eagle-eyed members of you may have spotted from the last segment of video that I actually attached one of these arms the wrong way up. Uh, it's very easy to discover that. Just uh, careful double check everything as you do it all these motors should be pointing upwards okay now it's looking like a rover now we're getting somewhere Now I have to plug all these motors into this board.
we have an array of sensors here now plugged into the main board up here. So now we need to zero the server. This is the servo motor. We've got the power on right now. I don't know whether you can see there's a whole array of little LEDs on here. And underneath the rover, we have these running lights, uh, which at night will shine up on the ground below the rover. Very cool. So, we have to take this servo cable and while the power's on, and also notice here we're charging the battery, we need to plug this into pin 6. So, orange. Orange is 6, then you've got 5 volts, and brown is ground, which corresponds to these three pins here. So apparently, we plug this into here. That's supposed to do something. This will set its angle to 90 degrees, it says. Uh, I didn't do anything at all. Ah, I see. It actually says insert the Type-C cable to charge the battery, then turn on the battery. I think I've got it on right now. So maybe I need to turn it off until the battery is charged. Let's uh, wait there for a little bit. So according to the LED, it's still charging. But I did make another mistake on my build. Uh, when I plugged in the charging cable, I forgot to reconnect the battery to the port, so it wasn't in fact charging. Now it's been charging for a while, and I'm wondering if that's enough for us to try this server experiment again. So what I've done is I've temporarily attached this arm to the servo and used it to pull the servo around very carefully. Maybe this will allow us to see when we align the servo. So according to the instructions, we turn it on and we plug this cable into pin 6. Yeah, see that? Let me show you that again. Turning the servo away from being aligned and watch what happens when I plug this in. See, it realigned this arm. So I think we've successfully done the servo aligning. So here's the camera mounted to the front of the rover. And it's attached via this servo motor to this assembly. So the servo motor will tip, will tip the assembly up and down to give the camera a greater field of view. We flip the rover upside down and now we're going to install this acrylic base which will protect the underside when it goes over rocks. We don't want it destroying the battery. Now we're going to attach the solar panel to the top.
not clear whether the wire should go under or over this bar. It was compressing them a little too much for my liking, so I'm putting them over the bar and let's hope that uh, that's not a mistake. sure that's right either. Instructions say to have this bar pointing down but it's definitely interfering with these cables. I'm going to look at this a little bit more. And now it's clear to me why I was having so much trouble with these cables because uh, you must study the instructions very carefully. These standoffs are actually double stacked. Now there's going to be plenty of room for everything. Definitely learning some lessons building this kit. And here's the final rover. I think this took a few hours to build and I made a couple of mistakes as you saw. And it's a much larger rover than I imagined. It's about 12 inches long and the wheelbase is about 10 inches. A very rugged looking thing indeed. So in the next video we'll um, put it through spaces and see what it can do and then we'll get on to some programming. If you enjoyed this video Please like, subscribe and uh, stand by for the next video. Cheerio.